legal analysis on this matter. We're joined now by Ritume Zipiri, uh, who's joining us via video link to just weigh in on the developments around the embattled uh, former Speaker of the National Assembly. Thank you so much uh, for your time, Ritume Zipiri. Just give us your observations uh, in as far as today's case is concerned. I mean, it was a bail application. Uh, is it the norm for an accused like the Speaker's legal t a team had, uh, you know, weighed in and focused extensively on the evidence against her? Um, is that the norm to do in a bail application? Just, just unpack uh, some of the developments that happened today. Yeah, I think for most part, um, the manner in which the bail application proceeded today uh, was in the ordinary course, so there wasn't much of a surprise. Um, I think, as you mentioned, it is a bit of a surprise that the defense uh, spent a lot of time talking about the weakness of the case uh, in instances where, you know, they haven't actually seen the evidence. Yes, they, were, they know what the charges are. Uh, they know that there'll be uh, another uh, accused that will be added following from the information that was seized at Mapisa Ngakula's house. Uh, but, you know, for all intents and purposes at this stage of the proceedings, they don't know what the evidence is against uh, Mapisa Ngakula and they rightfully said uh, that, you know, essentially it was conjecture based on uh, the reports in the newspapers that had come out a couple of weeks ago. Um, and that's really how they've pieced whether the state has a strong case or not. And I think the state was clear to also say, well, you know, this is not something they'd know at this particular point in time. And for all intents and purposes, you know, that kind of statement doesn't take the matter further for the proceedings today. And I mean, uh, just on that point, in as far as uh, the how weak the case is or not. I mean, the state denied um, saying that it's not relying just on a single witness and says that there is ample evidence corroborating uh, the uh, 204 witnesses testimony against the former speaker. I mean, you, you hear the state saying that and then towards the closure of this particular application saying and leaving us with that bombshell uh, announcement as it were that uh, you know that the state will be bringing in a new accused and therefore suggesting that this case be postponed to the 4th of june just talk to us about uh, you know where was i mean was this uh, foreseen and also what does it mean in as far as this particular case is concerned uh, I mean, at, at least as when the urgent application that Mapisa Ngakula brought to court was unfolding, uh, you know, we became aware of the fact that um, the state's case uh, had really been built around the testimony or the uh, the evidence that will come from a Section 204 witness uh, who was actually implicated uh, in the corruption with Mapisa Ngakula herself. Uh, it became a big thing for Mapisa Ngakula in the urgent application because, you know, there are questions around cautionary rules around, you know, the single uh, testimony of one witness. Uh, but, you know, as the state has indicated today, there are other pieces of evidence that can corroborate um, a single witness's testimony, and that doesn't on, of itself make the issue uh, or make the case any more weak. Um, and I think, you know, as we've in, what we found out today was that as part of the raid on Mapisa Ngakula's house, uh, more evidence was collected which suggested that an additional suspect should be, an additional accused should be added to the matter. And that's also, um, uh, you know, standard, you know, sometimes as the matter gets investigated or as the matter proceeds, more and more evidence points to uh, a few people needing to be added uh, to the charges, etc., which is what's going to happen here. And this is why we have then this postponement, uh, because the state said they need approximately six weeks, if I recall correctly, to ensure that everything around that particular accused is also then uh, done accordingly, and then the matter will return. So we're not likely to get going yet, um, but you know, for this particular matter, it's already created a postponement, um, and which is normal. We're still going to have a few preliminary skirmishes uh, before this matter is actually likely to get going. To what extent um, did the defences, uh, you know, bringing up the medical conditions um, of the speaker have to do with her bail uh, condition or at least um, her successfully getting this uh, bail? Uh, I mean, of course, we know that the state uh, had said that uh, they would not oppose the bail. But I mean, uh, Kerr Phillips uh, saying that um, he wants to place on record that uh, Mapisa Ngakula suffers from dangerous hypertension and requires constant medication and, of course, also 
also painting a picture of how the prisons um, in South Africa would not be conducive for her to, you know, to be arrested in. Her medical condition definitely played a role. Uh, in her securing bail, you know, because it was a, it's a Schedule 5 offence, uh, you know, the, the onus was on her to show that it's in the interest of justice that she be granted bail. And a number of factors are assessed by the court uh, in coming to the conclusion whether it's in the interest of justice, you know, um, whether someone is a prior offender or there's pending uh, cases against them. Uh, age could be a, 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 cons a factor that's taken into account, whether someone's a flight risk, uh, uh, you know, questions of whether someone will interfere with witnesses, etc. So those were ventilated as Mapisa Ngakula's affidavit was read out to the court. It wasn't you know, squarely intended to tick the box to show that all of these factors put together indicate that um, it's in the interest of justice that she be granted bail. And certainly her health is something that the court would have taken into consideration uh, in giving her bail. Uh, I think it did assist that the state didn't oppose the bail, but certainly Ms. Mapisa Ngakula needed to make that case uh, for herself, which I think she did. Her lawyers, again, as they have in the past, uh, requested access uh, to the docket um, of the evidence, uh, you know, against her. Uh, that was also discussed in court. Just talk us uh, through some of the dynamics as it relates to that particular docket. Yes, uh, at this stage of the proceedings, you know, um, uh, and especially given that we're seeing that there they might be a second suspect or accused added, um, it wouldn't be the norm that uh, the access to the docket and the evidence is given to Mapisa Ngakula. So, you know, at this stage, it is a bit premature for that because we were dealing with a bail application, but certainly as the matter progresses and the parties, for instance, there'll be pre-hearing meetings and a whole bunch of things that the parties will engage in, uh, you know, Mapisa Ngakula will get access to the docket uh, as the matter progresses. But for at this point in time of the proceedings, that wasn't going to be the case.